Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about the new React JSX Transform. Dun dun dun! Not as scary as it sounds. It's a, you know what? Let's just start looking at the code. Get the old green screen going. So, this is the new blog post that just came out this past week. I don't know what I'm posting this video, but it came out recently. And it's talking about, so uh, React 17 is coming out soon. The RC has been out for a while. I have a video talking about how there's no big features in it, but also it seems like React 17, which is really exciting to me about React in general right now, is that I think the React team has finally come to the conclusion that they actually need to start deprecating things to move React forward. Uh, they're making some hard decisions and making some hard lines in the sand to actually remove some of the cruft and tech debt that React has accrued over five, six years. They're doing it in a very careful way so that nobody's left in a lurch dealing with some React, some old React 16 application, which is still very new. Uh, but they're taking these gradual, they're putting in place these, these steps that's going to make it possible for them to cut dead weight and react 17 goes a long way towards that to being able to embed different versions of react and one other things they do is that react 17 is also providing support for a new version of the jsx transform and the JS transform, jsx transform is how you do the angle brackets in a react component so just like this right this is the jsx it looks like html mixed with javascript and it's been largely unchanged since React first came out. And there's a few decisions that the React team wants to probably change with it that they're a little bit constrained to do so. And they are changing the way in which when you write code like this, uh, you run it through a transpiler like Babel typically, and it gets translated to code like this and it makes it call react.createElement. And there are constraints around that behavior that I don't really know what they are. I know the React team does, and that's why they want to change it. They actually outline the three reasons why they are going through all this work to change how JSX is transformed. Uh, the benefits are uh, you can use JSX without importing React, which is a nice little carrot to encourage people to adopt this new transform. It means that now instead of having to write import React in every file to actually have it work, and it's required because the way the transform works is it, is it transforms this JSX into a react.createElement call, and it needs to have React in scope on that file to be able to do that. With this new transform, what happens instead is you just write a very simple component with JSX, and then the compiler will instead transform it to use this underscore JSX function, which is being imported from a new, it's a new import provided by React. So the React team actually worked with the Babel team to make this work correctly. This is where two is greater than one. Two is greater than one. And this is code that you're expected to never put into your code. The compiler will do that for you. And by letting the compiler do that for you, it lets, I guess the React team also have flexibility in the future if they want to shift that again. Again, they'd have to coordinate that, but then they can actually, I don't know, they just want to do that. It sounds better. Uh, it's actually a thing that Preact has to do right now because Preact, which is a, Preact is, uh, what does it say on its website? It's a small alternative to React with the same API. If you actually want to use Preact, you actually have to go through the trouble of, uh, configuring the Babel plugin to import. So when it makes the transform to import from, I don't know, this is code that kind of says, instead of transforming the code to call react.createElement, it says to use preact.h is kind of what you have to do there, but that makes things easier in this case. Um, they also say that it may slightly improve your bundle size, which is a little wishy-washy, but sure. And I think most importantly for the React team, uh, well, this one, it will enable, most important is enabling future improvements. 
And they're saying it'll reduce the number of concepts that you need to learn React, which I'm sure is true. But I think most importantly, it'll enable future improvements, which I'm most excited about because I love seeing things grow and get better. So that's the short of it, where the transform is changing. To adopt it, you need to do two things. As it says here, you need to have a version of React that supports the new transform. So what that means is that if you, so there's two things. One, a version of React that supports the transform and a compatible compiler. And again, this is two parts being greater than one because if you upgrade just the compiler such that it transforms this into this and your React version is not updated and doesn't actually provide this import, then your application is going on fire. So you have to do these things at the same time. Uh, it seems that React 17 will be the first to support this transform, and then they'll actually backport this functionality to 0 0.14, 15, and 16. That is some dedication to backwards compatibility. They definitely want people to start using this new transform, so that's really exciting. Support already being added into Create React app in the upcoming 4.0 release. Next.js already uses it in this version, Gatsby as well. Uh, if you have a manual setup, you need to be at least beyond Babel 7.9, and then change the configuration to currently the old transform, runtime classic is the default option. I have to change that to automatic because the more thinking you can do for me, the more thinking I can think about donuts. Donut. Their support being added. See, this is what's wild to me. Like this change with JSX is not isolated, it's just React. So first it involves Babel to support the new transform. And then it also needs, then ESLint also needs to support it because right now there's common ESLint rules where it'll yell at you if you don't have React in scope. And this will actually be an anti-pattern after you switch to this. TypeScript needs to support the new JSX transform because TypeScript's a compiler, a transpiler like Babel. So 4.1 beta will support that. Flow, who uses Flow? Because React loves code mods, they're actually providing a code mod so you can actually migrate your React code to remove the import React from your file scope. And I'm sure they use that internally at Facebook and they're just open sourcing it for our usage, which is great. And the code model will remove all unused React imports as a result of upgrading to the JS transform. And it's going to change all default React imports, i.e. this, which is my default way of importing React to either use named imports for hooks, uh, which is the preferred style going into the future. I note on that in a second, there is a tweet here about this, you know, how it's transforming things. So for example, if you have a file that looks like this, this code mod will just replace it with this because that's all that the new transpiler needs. If you have code that looks like this, where you're actually calling react.usState, the code mod will actually replace it to do a named import here. Um, in addition to cleaning up unused imports, it'll also help you prepare for a future major version of React, not React 17, that will support ES modules and not have a default export. That's important. It means that some ver feature version of React will not support this. That is a default export. It will not be supported. Uh, there's a tweet that I saw here where essentially Dan Abramov works on the React team, says that in, so it's saying that the default import will be valid in 17, but not in the long-term future. It might break in React 19 or 20. Again, he's, he's, Speaking for the React team, but also like things can change. Don't hold him accountable. He's just Dan doing his part. Uh, these two statements will work. Import a named import use state or import all named exports onto a scoped React object. But the default export will no longer, the default import will no longer work. It will no longer work in 19 or 20, which is probably three, four years out anyways. So there's no really rush there, but might as well start skating to where the puck's going to be. Um, and that's it. It should be very gradual. React is very <laughs> gradual with these changes. Uh, to summarize, you'll need to upgrade to at least React 17 or eventually a new version of React 16 that has support for that new transform. 
and then upgrading your compiler as well to support it. Um, uh, Henry Leftpad, who is a the maintainer of Babel, actually made this fun little playground where you can actually kind of see the new transforms in action. Um, this is the automatic transform. So given these inputs, it makes these outputs. You can kind of see this import source. You can change this to Preact. You can see how it changes it over here where it's being imported. So I imagine that Preact is probably going to have to provide that import as well, unless it already does. This is automatic. And then with Classic, you can see how it does the old Classic behavior. So it's a fun little playground if you're curious how that actually works. So that is the JSX transform. The biggest impact you'll see is not having to import React in every file that uses JSX, which is a nice little developer experience improvement and just makes the file in general cleaner. And also in some weird way, makes JSX more of a standard, uh, a transpiled standard, sure, but also one that's a little bit less coupled to React itself. So that's kind of cool to see. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and you're excited to upgrade when it's actually out. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. I'm here every week, new videos just like this. And I'll catch you in the next video with more JavaScript stuff. Till then, stay happy, stay coding.